I'm Josh Parks, I'm a compositor currently working at MPC Advertising in London. It's currently Christmas advertising season, so I'm working on a Tesco advert at the moment, the blockbuster in the ads world, I guess, the Christmas adverts. Before that, I was working at a company called Blue Bowl, which we did TV stuff, so it was kind of Peaky Blinders and Catherine the Great. And then before that, I was at a company called Important Looking Pirates in Sweden, working on Game of Thrones for two months for the final season. Previously as well, I worked at a company called ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, and I worked on Jurassic World 2, Transformers, and Ready Player One. And then previously I worked at Double Negative on Wonder Woman Star Trek, and then where I started my career at the Movement Picture Company or NPC Film, working on Guardians of the Galaxy and Martian. This might be a bit of recency bias, but it's kind of Jurassic World 2. A good friend of mine uh, called Miguel Santana de Silva who's a compositor at ILM, he designed this amazing shot, it's almost like a, this like, beautiful painting um, of the Brachiosaurus kind of rearing its legs and being silhouetted in kind of, and being engulfed by a load of, of smoke from a volcano. It was very clever on how he kind of lit behind and silhouetted everything. And it just looked beautiful, it was just like a, a beautifully kind of balanced shot and just well thought out. So that is kind of the biggest shot that sticks in my mind. And I think lots of people who've seen that film would also say the same. Getting into work, hopefully on time. Companies change, so it's either 9 or 9.30. And then if you're starting a new show, generally you'd be kind of told whereabouts, what room you're going to be sitting in, in advertising. You're in kind of small rooms with your team. And then once you're there, you found your room, you'd then be told what shots you're going to be working on. Maybe a look has been pre-decided, so you'd be told kind of like, okay, we want you to match this look. Or if you're kind of in the scene, your lead roles, you'll be actually uh, developing that look yourself in which case you'd be told kind of these are the things that the client really likes, so let's try and get something close to that. And then after lunch, it's kind of headphones on, um, sitting down in front of your shots and getting them done, and then throughout the day, maybe intermittently asking your supervisor for feedback and just getting that stuff down. So yeah, and in film, that would be daily, so you'd sit in a small cinema room and just get your feedback again, the supervisor would watch it over and just tell you what areas maybe need improving or tweaking. For me personally, it was when I was just starting out in the industry and I worked on a film called The Finest Hours. It was so challenging is because it was a stereo show, which is just 3D basically, so it's a 3D show. And what they do now is they actually shoot it with one camera and then make it 3D after we've done our work. But at the time, they them to actually shoot it 3D, so they use two cameras next to each other, left eye and right eye, and actually shoot that. Which means when it comes to comping or compositing, which is what I do, we would then have to actually kind of do our work twice. We'd have to shift over all our work into the other eye. The way that you're going about learning new things and always looking to learn something new. So what you want to be doing is going into work every day, searching for something new that you didn't know before. So for me, when I started at NPC Film, I would actually go into work half an hour early and open up people's new scripts and look through and find bits now, I mean, the great thing was I could find like the coolest shot, go in, how did they make it look cool? Okay, let me find the best bits, and then I would then go ask them for how they actually made that look good. And I kind of use that, that still. I mean, I'm finding it tricky to learn something new every day, but what I do now at the end of every project, I'll literally ask my supervisor, hey, can I buy you a coffee and we sit down? And then I'll get them to give me feedback. And generally, if you want to use this tip, they're not going to be that negative with you, which is bad, because you want them to kind of tell you all the bad stuff, right? So what you should do, is throughout the, the project, have in mind who you think is like the best compositor, for instance, on the show, and then ask them who they thought the best compositor on the show was. You can be like, I know it probably wasn't me, but just tell me who you thought like uh, worked, you, you worked best with and who was the best compositor, and then it's amazing how kind of that's actually a completely different person to the person you thought it was. And then you can kind of watch that person work and work out why they maybe thought, and you can actually ask your supervisor, okay, you said this person was the best compositor, why is that? What were they doing that I can kind of emulate? So I think that's the trick, it's, it's always realising that you don't actually, you're never there at the final destination, it's kind of a continuous learning thing. It's about not having the ego to think that you're kind of done. Always trying to get better throughout. You'll see most VFX effects conferences, they kind of have this like hour long talk with six people all talking about what to put in a show reel. Um, they kind of really trivialise it, they make it this really complicated, like Enigma codes thing that you've got to kind of discover. Maybe if you put this shot here, it will get you the job, and maybe if you move all the shots around. But actually that's, that's not true at all. Like, if your work's not good, it doesn't matter what order you put it in, or what font you pick, or what music you pick for your show reel, you're not going to get a job. And I think 
The problem with that is people end up wasting their time and it's kind of a form of procrastinating really. They don't make any new work or improve their work. They actually end up spending all their time re-editing their showreel that was rubbish to begin with. They should kind of really focus on the shots. So my bit of advice would be for showreels, find someone that just got the job that you want to get. For me, if I was starting out as a compositor, I'd find a junior compositor that had just started working and got the job I wanted at a particular company. And then I would just copy their showreel. So for instance, with modeling and texturing, there's a guy I went to university with called Zach Boxall. He's a modeling and texture artist. He started out at ILM and now moved to Weta. You look at his showreel, he's got an elephant first of all, and then he has some breakdowns, okay? Maybe I can do an animal as well, maybe a squirrel, maybe an otter, for instance, at the moment we're doing an otter at work at the moment, and do a copy the breakdowns. Then he has kind of like a hard body helicopter. You could do a train, copy the breakdowns. He's got turnarounds with, a, with all the photos around it. And then he then had a really detailed small panel of a spaceship where he'd go into a bunch of detail. He had three things in his show reel. And what most students do is they kind of, again, overthink it and really think about what to put in their show But actually, find someone that got the job and copy their show reel. Copy their title card, copy the type of music, and everything. Copy their show reel. Don't make anything up.